Centuries of slate mining has profoundly changed the countryside in northwest Wales. But I think that there is a beauty in this place too. You can't help but be moved by the sheer scale of it all. But what can you do with these abandoned quarries and mines that now dominate this landscape? I've come to Camorthin Slate Mine on the mountain above Blaina Festiniog to meet one man who's found a solution. Hey, yeah, good to see you again. How have you been? Miles Moulding runs Go Below, an adventure company that takes daring tourists to explore abandoned slate mines so they can see underground workings the miners would have once used. Left or right, Miles? First opened in 1810, this is the biggest underground slate mine in the world. There are over 60 miles of passages and chambers stretching down thousands of feet. Miles is taking me ever deeper into this mine network. Where we're going now is most definitely off limits. He's clearly passionate about this place, despite its obvious dangers. I love the adventure. When you go out into the big wide world today, into a city, and you, you have a look at how sanitised, really, it is, and how safe everything is. And you come out into the wilderness, be it in a mine or on the side of a mountain, and it puts you back in touch, really, with the, sort of the real hazards of the world. We're going on a two-hour trek to a part of the mine that's collapsed and is incredibly dangerous. Miles is hoping to get us to a part that's not been seen by any living soul for 140 years. Oh, my God, look at that. I'm afraid to tell you this is probably the most dangerous place I've ever taken you, Will. Right. Um, it's in a very poor state. There's rocks falling in all over the place, so we have to weave our way through this. It's really important that you don't touch any of the timber, don't touch any of the walls, the roof or the floor. All right, mate, let's go. Lead the way. All right. Hey, it looks really dangerous. By now, we're 1,300 feet under the mountain. That's a lot of rock above us. Behind us is certain death to avoid that. You wouldn't think so, but that's actually our way forward there. Is it really? Yep. You see how much rock this one timber is still holding up? <laughs> yes, I can, Miles. <laughs> it's like seven grand pianos above one piece of wood that's 120 years old. I think the health and safety brief there is do not touch that piece of wood under any circumstances. There it is. Bit of limbo land. On the other side of the tunnel of death is a section of this huge mine that's on the very edge of where Miles has explored. He wants to check out an area that no one's accessed since the 1800s. He secured some bolts and steps into the cliff face, but it's still a tricky climb to the next level. We know that men have been up there, but we've got no idea what we might find. Two more steps. Oh. This is it. We reach the top of the ledge, but this is just the start. The small tunnel we want to explore is a tense traverse away along a vertical rock face. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mate. Timber. We're done. Oh, mate, what's up there? As soon as we enter the tunnel, we discover the remnants of 140-year-old slate mining. That's a candle. Candle? Yeah. Is that a detonator? It's a box of them. Open her up. Oh. 
That's not survived. No, it's, it's cardboard inside. None of this has been seen by anyone since the 1800s. It's an eerie feeling when we spot something very human. Oh, wow. Boots. Yeah, they're not welly prints, they're... Um, Hobnail boots. boots. Yeah. I mean, they're almost like a... like a horse's hoof. Yeah, the that, heels are, is yeah. Is that the heels? Right. Yeah, and these are the, obviously the nails that are driven into the, the sole of the shoe. This looks like a prospecting tunnel where two men would have blasted and dug in the hope of finding the slate vein. But we soon discover they gave up on this one. They've not got far. Why do you think that they would have stopped here and not continued? Well, it's hard to say, really. Probably they decided somewhere else was worth the effort a bit more. You know, they've taken the, the fella off here and, and put him somewhere else that's just got better prospects, I suppose. It's an honour to be the first people here in over a century. But on the way out, we spot something that tells us this place is even older than we thought. Oh, my God! There is a date here that has been drawn in the dust. Look at that. 1858, perfectly preserved, the fingertip of a Victorian worker down here has written that in the dust. That is a human connection, and it gives us the precise date that this tunnel was driven. We now know, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that this place is older than we thought before we came up here. It is 161 years old. <laughs>